Hello guys, welcome to another beautiful episode of Leadership Podcast with Stephen Akintayo. And today, what's funny is that I'm the one dressing like the politician and um, <laughs> he's the one dressing like the businessman. <laughs> okay, so today I have an, um, uh, um, a businessman, by the way, as well as a politician. And we're going to be looking at leadership. Um, we're also going to be looking at leadership among young people. Uh, we're going to be looking at the right set of leadership and how do we get leadership right. Ladies and gentlemen, I have in the studio, this is from Accra, Ghana, but uh, makeshift quick studio, <laughs> Honorable Shinopela. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you, my brother. Good to see you. So what happened? Why are we changing? Why? Should I off my, you know, and then you give me the suit? <laughs> you, forget, you, you forgot that I, uh, I was uh, a businessman mm -hmm. before was, politics. Oh, I used to. I, 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 I am. <laughs> business is business. Isn't it? Yes. So I've been, I've been into business, and um, it's actually part of getting the business right yes. that led me into politics. How long yeah. ago did you start business? I, st I started. That I started politics. Business. Or business. Mm -hmm. I've been doing business for the past 20 years. 20 years. Yes. Did you start as a club or you had other businesses? No, I had other businesses. I even started business from school. Okay. Yeah. What were your business? Okay, I'll tell you. The first time when we had um, the first ASU strike, mm -hmm. I remember that time. What I used to do then is go to Lagos and go yeah. and buy clothes. Okay. I'll come back to Ibadan. Wow. And start selling to all those egg months. They want to yeah. buy Tommy Ufiga. They want to buy Rab. Yeah. They want to buy things. <laughs> and from there, yeah. I went into Aquila. And okay. then I started supplying diesel. Okay. Yeah, from supplying... In Ibadan or Lagos? In Ibadan. Okay. Yeah, from supplying diesel between Ibadan and Lagos, mm. I decided to go deeper, mm -hmm. you know, into that supply. Mm. Because at first, you know, you buy diesel... Mm. Uh, any other petroleum product, mm -hmm. then you have to rent trucks yeah. then to make the delivery. Mm. And that time, you hear maybe when Dizu is selling for maybe at the rate of uh, 106 naira, mm -hmm. somebody can tell you that uh, somebody wants to buy from your neighborhood for 120 naira. Wow. So you end up going and rent a truck, get your diesel, and yeah. by the time you get to Bado, they tell you that you are late. Ah. <laughs> so the people from the truck company yeah. will start stressing you, you wow. need to offload, then yes. they start giving you other Condition, options yeah. of selling, you okay, know, at, a, low, at a lower price, price yeah, you know. So I just think in business, what yeah. I've, I've, I just try as much as possible as I grow in business to see, you know, when there's a challenge and how to, you know, mm -hmm. um, grow over that challenge. Yeah. And even when I went into nightclub, mm. the story of Quillox, mm. my first before we even get to nightclub, yeah. isn't it funny how your dad was into show business and yeah. you took over? Mm -hmm. So let's before we go into Kikula, let's go back backtrack to your dad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> your dad was a very famous uh, person in the country. Yeah. And can you tell us briefly for you what were the first of all his story and how he started that business? and some of the leadership lessons you learned from your dad and how that shaped, you know, your early business days. Okay. As you know, my dad was um, the greatest magician that Africa had ever seen. Mm. I don't think there's, that there has been any other magician mm -hmm. after him. Mm -hmm. And um, he died about 27 years ago. Yes, okay. I think it's going to be 28 this year, mm -hmm. 1997. Mm. 1997, now that's... I, uh, that's, that's 20, that's 26, yeah, yeah, yeah. 26, yeah, yeah. 27 years now. Yes. So, um, yes, when we were growing up. At what age did he die? He died at 61. Wow, that was young. He died at 61, he was assassinated. Yeah. You know, yeah, he was assassinated. By who? Uh, we don't know till today, but he was assassinated while praying. Wow. Yeah, because, you know. Was he a Muslim? Yeah, he was a Muslim. He prays five. He doesn't choke with his prayers. Wow. And I can say that's one of the things that I got from him. I yeah. realized how important prayer is now. Mm. And I think that is the most important part of my everyday. Mm -hmm. You understand? So mm. at that time, I think he was on an interview wow. that they asked him. They were asking him about magic and when... Is it that he doesn't have, you know, the magic power around him? So he said on the TV that whenever I want to pray, 
Yeah. Ah. When, yeah. So he was actually assassinated while he was praying. Wow. Yeah, but um, so that's like I said, is a challenge. That's but a very yeah, touching one. Yeah. yeah. But how did? First of all, I think I, I want to say that uh, my condolences anyway. Thank you. I can see even here that it's really a touching story. But was what was the assassination the reason why you didn't go into that type of magic business? Magic is magic. Mm. Magic is an act of making the impossibilities possible. Mm -hmm. In the nightlife industry, Nigeria, I've done magic. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. So I might not just be doing entertainment <laughs> magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but magic is magic. Hmm. And when we were growing up, we used to work with him. Okay. Yeah, when we were growing up, you know, he taught us, you know, the business side yes, you know, magic. of uh, magic. I remember that time I, I worked in two different parts, the PR parts, yeah. because that time there was no social media. Yeah. So what we do that time is proper... Uh, like town crying yes. uh, uh, model where yeah. you put speakers on yes. the phone yes. and you have to speak on yeah. Yoruba. <laughs> yeah. I remember in Oshogbo, you see, and Leo, they were talking about them, but Oshogbo, Oshogbo, I meet it. Lord, you're Saturday, I saw they come back and watch Professor Fella, you know, this kind of thing. So I said that, then ticketing as well. Yes. You know, there was a time that um, probably maybe. He was losing money in ticketing wow. because probably maybe people steal yes. tickets. So he yeah. brought me in that time, wow. basically. Were you his first son? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Ah, first son, okay. So I'm the first son from my mother, mother yeah, yeah, to him, yeah. So, so during ticketing, mm -hmm. he brought us in as um, to be able to check tickets. Yeah. You know, when people come in, then you tear half mm -hmm. of the ticket, mm -hmm. then after that you can do reconciliation. Yeah. You know, of that as well. Yeah. And, you know, just kept going with him. You know, mm -hmm. we assist him on stage as well. Mm -hmm. We do opening, you mm -hmm. know, for him because mm -hmm. his magic, uh, uh, his magical show yeah. has uh, uh, an arrangement, a routine. Okay. Okay. So whereby, you know, he can start small, yeah. then he can you you know, progress. So, yeah. they, uh, progress. so, so whenever we are on holiday from school, mm. we always join him and we mm. do the starting, mm. you know, from him mm. as well. Mm. And that's why mm. we kept going. What would you say were the business lessons as I PR? So you mentioned PR lessons you learned, management being helping him to manage the tickets. Mm. Were there all that things you picked that you are using today in your business. I won't say magic, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, one, yeah, maybe one of those things, again, is ability, you know, to do, you know, to make the best out of whatever that you do, mm. you understand? Mm. Even if you, what you, you know best, mm. my dad will still continue. He loves mm. practicing mm. because he tells us that practice makes perfect. Mm. So whatever that you do, you yeah, just have to do it. You just keep again. doing it. So, so it's not tenacity, yeah, just yeah. being consistent yeah. and tenacious. So the big question, I think the elephant in the room is, why did you to do magic business? I think there's a lot that um, uh, that requires. Mm. I remember even that time when we travel for mm. my dad's um, tour, Yeah, we moved with an average of about 40 crew member wow. then. So I think wow. the stress was too much and uh, managing wow. people in Nigeria, you can, yeah. I'm, so I'm sure you know yeah. what that means, yeah. you know, in Nigeria. And mm -hmm. I just think for me, from when I was in school, mm -hmm. I've just decided to, you know, be a businessman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, during the ASU strike, yeah. I started, you know, I look for opportunities mm -hmm. when there's a problem mm -hmm. Then I try to, you want my, to, you to yes, yeah, and, take, and, advantage you know, take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And that was what I have built, mm -hmm. you know, till today, even wow. finding myself in politics mm -hmm. because I mm -hmm. see governance as a big problem in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that's why as a nightclub owner, yeah. when I woke up one day and I said I was going into politics, people thought I was running mad. Yes. <laughs> Exactly, because the nightclub business is a big, big business. And and what year did you start the nightclub business? Okay, the story about the nightclub, I started Quilox, that was in 2013, okay. as the first purposely built nightclub. 
Wow. The first. Night. Yeah. But before then, purposeful build? purposely built nightclub yeah. to what standard, okay. world class standard what that you can mean? enter. The first nightclub you can enter in Nigeria, you mm -hmm. can close your eyes and feel you are in the United States. Oh, okay. And you can feel that you are maybe live in Miami or okay. one of all these big top clubs around the world. Okay. But before then, yeah. I was a partner mm -hmm. at a club called Groto. I don't know whether you know Groto, Natimiang, mm -hmm. in Lagos. Okay. During this time, I had a partnership, okay. you know, with um, this guy. Okay. I you know, it was, it my, it was he's my friend. Okay. And it was um, operating Groto. Okay. So at that time, he had you know some operational issues, issues and maybe bank issues liquid. and everything. Mm -hmm. So he approached me, saying that he needed a partner. Mm -hmm. Most of all, the clubs in Lagos then were run by partnership yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. So when I went into the business with him, mm. I asked for the records and yes. um, I told him for us to be able to step up yeah. you know, on the sales, we need to do three things. Mm -hmm. The first thing is one, mm. change the name of the club. Yeah. So that at least when you want new patronage, yeah. then you let people know yeah, exactly. that it is a new business. Yeah. Two, we need to do some renovation. Mm. It might not be something too much, yeah. but when people get a new name and they walk into the club, yeah. you want to see new things. Yeah. Even if the walls are white, mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. to black, if mm -hmm. you have the DJ on the yeah. right, you can move the DJ to the mm -hmm. left, mm -hmm. you know, and just do some renovation. Yeah. And the most important thing is mm -hmm. the management structure, Very true. you know, of the club. So yeah. how the club is run, because mm -hmm. before, he just takes money directly from the cashier. And I, <laughs> <laughs> so I put in the right yeah. management structure. Yeah. Even myself and him were on salary okay. and everything. So every money that comes in goes straight to the bank. Yeah. So although, yeah, we created petty cash accounts and yeah. all sorts. Yeah. So, but within the space, so I renamed the club, Groto, we renamed it Lux. Okay. Oh. oh yeah, which okay. means, which means uh, luxury in French. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So that was in 2010, okay. 2010, 2011. Yeah. So within a space of um, three weeks mm. that we opened the club, the club made double the amount of what it was making. Wow. And it was good business. Mm. But unfortunately, the partnership got sour. <laughs> I can expect that. Partnership got sour. Yeah. He had to develop, dissolve the partnership. Wow. The club now moved back the name okay. to grow to, and my name was thrown at me. Uh, By that time, that had already developed my interest in nightlife. Oh, okay. So I said to myself that I was going to build the best club. Wow. So at that time, I didn't even have the budget. Wow. But I just went on the internet and I googled the 10 best nightclubs in the world. Wow. I took my passport, wow. I traveled, and at every night I go back to my computer and I try to make a plan. Wow. So by the time I came back to Nigeria, mm -hmm. my perception about nightclub had changed. Wow. So it took us at least a space of two and a half years to put Quilox together. Wow. In Lagos or? In Lagos. Lagos. And when they asked me what is the meaning of Quilox. Yeah. Then my company name was Aquila, okay. which means eagle ah. in Latin. Okay. So if there was no locks. Yes. The Aquilos would have been Aquila Club. Okay. But because my name was thrown at me, yes, Lux. Yes. So I had to take Quit from Aquila <laughs> and Lux. Okay. From Lux and merge it together okay. to become Quilux. Okay. So when people ask me what is the meaning of Quilux, Quilux. So I tell them it means redefinition in ah. Shino's language. <laughs> so we redefine nightlife with Quilux. And today, we thank God, the business has been on mm. for 11 years now. Where was the first location? Was same this, location. Same place. Same name. How did you get that? How, did, how did you get that that location? Because it's a it's a prime location. Yeah, it's a prime location, yeah. So it was leased okay. at the beginning, yeah. And as it is, the club was built from scratch. Mm. Even at that time, when I wanted to invest in the club, I had a lot of people that discouraged me. My financial consultant was against it. Yeah. My lawyer was against Why it. Why were they against it? And it does say that in general, nightlife, nightclub business is not a business for long yeah, life. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, but for me, I knew what I wanted, and yeah. I were focusing more on building on success. On building success. Mm -hmm. So with Quilox, from 2013 till date. Mm has become the every year new club. Wow. I think it is, a, it is the only club that shuts down every year. Really? And reopens again, yeah. For how long do you know why it shut down every 30 year? 30 days. We, we run an 11-month calendar. 
Oh. So after it's every right. 11 months, okay. we take a break. Usually one month is that? Yeah, about 30 days, 35 days. No, I mean, is it in January or February? Uh, for me, but me, because for me as a Muslim, I yeah. think I want to use you know, one stone to okay. kill two birds. Yeah. So I rather want to take it during Ramadan. Ramadan. You understand? Okay. So okay. when we can have the time, oh, okay. you know, to focus good. on Ramadan at the same time to rebuild the business. Nice. So go back to the drawing board. Yeah check mistakes that we've made, mm. look at what is happening around the world, now we want to step up our game. Mm. And just find the best way to make our customer mm. feel better. What was your greatest leadership lesson like? Because when you, I mean, you've done so many things and you've managed people. Let's even look at it before we go into politics, in the area of business, what has been your, your magic, yes, let's use the word magic. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your magic stroke when it comes to leadership, leading people, managing people? Simple, managing taking responsibility. Okay, can you explain that more? No, yeah, taking responsibility, you know, is, um, it makes you better as a person. Mm. One, you will continue to have, to have one challenge or the other in this world. Yeah, but take ownership, own you know, it. Yeah, so mm. when you make mistakes, yeah. Take responsibility. Mm. Mm. I've worked with people that is so glaring that mm. they run away from taking responsibility. Mm. It's only when they want to take accolades that they come up. Yeah, and, yeah I it. did it. Yeah. yeah, but for me and everybody that's worked with me in the yeah. past, they know me. When things go wrong, I come mm. out and apologize. Mm. You know, but I mm. can assure you that I don't. I won't do one do, mistake yes, twice. You know. Yeah. You know, but we're bound to make mistakes, mm. Mm. and when you take responsibility. You know, to correct those mistakes, mm. I think the people behind you, yeah. they tend to believe more in mm. you. Mm. You know, and know that you are not a kind of boss that will throw them under the ball. Yeah. You know, mm. when they see you as somebody that can mm. take full responsibility. What year did you now move into business, into politics? Yeah, I moved into politics in 2018. And this is funny. I need to just tell you a story. Yeah. Because for me, I've thought, I've never thought I'd be a politician. Okay. Before I joined politics, if you had placed a bet with me, yeah. with 10 naira, mm. I could have bet with my life that I will not do politics. Wow, why? Honestly. Mm. Why? Because why? I never believe in politics. I believe politics can easily make you lose a friend. Your, if your best friend mm. and you are yeah, contest for yeah. something, <laughs> yeah. you begin to look for each yeah. other's you know, mistakes yeah, and all. Yeah. And I just feel yeah. that it's not just something that I want to be involved mm. in. And um, I remember there was a time before politics, I had a project. We're about to establish Quilox abroad. Okay. But we didn't know, you know, you, when people come to Nigeria, we're like, oh, come and open Quilox in Canada. I yeah. say, oh, come and open yeah. Quilox in New York. Yeah. Come and open Quilox in South Africa. Yeah. So I said to my people that instead of us to just take a wrong decision, business yeah. decision, yeah. why can't we just create a Quilox World Tour? Okay. So if you, if you Google it, you see Quilox World Tour. Okay. So myself like a pop -up and club. yeah, like a pop-up club. Mm. So myself and five of my team. Yeah. That's DJ, my okay. DJ Consequence. I don't okay. know whether you know him. Okay. Uh, DJ Brooke Bailey, a okay. lady. She's from Belgium. Okay. Um, Halatika, the guys on the drum. Okay. Um, Kole, the hype okay. man. Mm. and the manager that time so we we'll travel mm. we we'll go to a particular town a mm. particular city one mm. of you know one of the top cities uh, the, uh nightlife cities in mm. the world mm. so we're in cape town we're in Joburg, mm. we're in dubai we're mm. in london mm. we're in new york miami so it was just one night yeah but if you're in that place mm. and you close your eyes you mm. believe that you are in Quilox Lagos wow it was, it was the DJ that is playing yeah the rituals yeah the make when they want to serve drinks yeah. is on the Quilox way yeah. the hype man and yeah. then I used to be the host for the party oh, okay you know so we traveled and that day we came back to Nigeria mm. I can never forget that day mm. it was a morning flight I think the last trip was London mm. So by the time we came back, I just wanted to have a warm shower. Yeah. Virgin Atlantic. Let me sleep. Mm. Then I'll start my day in the evening. Mm. Imagine everywhere we went to. I was in my room. Mm. Then I woke up. I said, okay. No, no you're just going. I said, let me have a shower, mm. sleep. Then I wake up. In this the was evening. in Nigeria. This was in Nigeria, mm. in Lekki. Okay. So I went into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. 
after putting soap in my hair mm. and everything and under the shower and everything, mm. something normal and crazy happened. It's normal to us in Nigeria, but it's crazy. What I just thought. After everywhere they have gone to meet my team and everything like that. Wow. My brother. Anytime I'm saying this story, I tell them that that's how I became I started the soap journey of my life. Wow. The soap all over my head, my face and everything. I opened the door, then I began to tiptoe. Wow. You know, not trying to because you know the, yeah. the, the floor in yes. the bathroom is yes. always, you know, yes. the kind of towels there yes. and everything. And yes. I have soap on my yes. all over my body. So I had to now go back. To my room, picked up the internet, yeah, and I had to now call somebody and tell them what happened to what. And first, I said they will go and pump and everything like that. Ah. So I just thought about it that this is a failed system. Wow, you know, and that was actually that was your aha moment. That was my aha moment. I decided that made me to go into politics. From that, my bathroom, that's funny. <laughs> I just felt this is a failed system. Wow. Because from everywhere that I'm going to, even in uh, council flats yeah, in the UK exactly. and everything like that, what that kind of stuff yeah. like that. But because in Nigeria, you yeah. have all the money, you yeah. have the turbine, you yeah. have solar, <laughs> you have generator, at the end yeah. of the day, you still live in a field mm. system. You, you mm. still feel. Mm. And everything like that. So I just felt like, I think we need to develop a new generation of leaders. And it mm. starts from, mm. you know, someone mm. taking responsibility. Mm. So, so what was your next step after that? So, and from then, yeah. the great uh, Allah for me, so rest in peace. Mm-hmm. He had advised me before mm-hmm. that I said no. Because there was a time that he came when I did my dad's um, remembrance. Yes. And um, I was trying to look at what to do to immortalize his name. Mm-hmm. So I said, let us, because of Okiogun, the area that yeah. I come from, mm-hmm. It occupies the largest percentage of, yeah. the, area, of the land in Ohio State, yeah. and the land is fully agrarian. Mm. And I was looking for what to do to celebrate mm. him, mm. but I noticed that um, there is no unity among mm. our people. Mm. So I decided to say, okay, let us play a football competition. Okay. So, you know, football is a universal language yeah, to build yeah, unity. Build build when you have two enemies mm-hmm. together supporting mm-hmm. one team, mm-hmm. if that team scores, they won't know when they <laughs> will hug each other and <laughs> everything. Just, uh, so we played football yeah. and that day, and, a, and as a sign of unity, yeah. I invited the Alafi. Okay. And I invited the Onion Fife. Oh. And before the Alafi and Onion Fife, they don't yeah. use to attend the, the same The current event. Tony. Yeah, the current okay. Tony. So it was that time yeah. when the Alafi heard that he told me that I should go into politics, but I just listened mm. then, but I mm. was not putting my body. Mm. So by, by the time that didn't happen yes. in my bathroom and everything. Yeah, yeah, and I said, exactly. my I said, yes, I need to listen to this man wow. because, you know, when he talks, yes. I know that he sees far, yes, yes. you know, before he yes. says anything, yeah, yeah. you know, and that was yeah. why I decided. Even when he made me the aider of Yoruba land, mm. I never, I was asking him when yeah, he told exactly. me that he needed to make me the aider, or he said he wanted to make me a chief. And yeah. I was like, oh, Baba, I want to do something in 2023. Let's do it after saying that. He yeah. said, no, that he has to, uh, what it, what's the right word uh, when they give somebody chief to um, install. Okay. Yeah, he has to install the first Aedero. Wow. I told him that what is Aedero? He said, the man that will promote peace and prosperity hey, in the land. Yeah. And yeah. all the qualities of the person that he wants that I have it. Wow. And the sign that he needed to see mm. to install the first idea he yeah. has seen it. I asked yeah. him, I said, what is the sign? He said, coronavirus. Uh-huh. That because something that will affect the whole world, then he mm. needs to bring in the first idea. Mm. So I told him, okay, Baba, let's do it in 2023 mm. after my mm. election. Mm. And he told me that year. He said, we must do it that year, that he has to install me as the first idea. That year. Mm. So when he died, the second year, I was the last oh, person yeah. I you know, yes. made the yeah, yeah. yeah. So at that time, yeah, so he was yeah. the one that told me at that time too that I should go into politics. Wow. So I okay. just listened to him that, yes, I've heard. But that morning, when that thing happened, I said to myself, I said, we are living in a field system and I think someone has to build the cat. Mm. You know, we need to start to develop you know, people, even if it's just 1%, 2%, yeah. you know, we continue to go identify ourselves mm. as people that believe, you know, leadership is important. Mm. Every father has a father, so, and every leadership, I mean, even in America, when it comes to politics, you say, oh, he's following Ronald Reagan system. Uh, People will say Obama was a mentee to Bill Clinton. 
for you at the point of going to politics, who was your model um, and who was the political mentor you were able to reach out to that started grooming you? Because, I mean, you're a businessman, no political background. Uh, or you didn't get any? I did not have any. Ah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't maybe if there was any, any then. Yeah. I would just say he's uh, the late Hachimabi. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he was a governor. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, yeah. So I came in through his regime. Through his regime. Yeah. yeah. But for me, today I just believe, you know, I I, I do not believe in Godfatherism. Mm. No. You don't believe in Godfatherism? No, I don't. No, no. Do, I believe in mentorship? mentorship. Yeah, I believe in mentorship. Yeah, so yeah. shouldn't you but, have yeah, but, but even with mentorship, if I'm going to believe that there must be, you know, I believe in identifying the values. Okay. in that person but if those values are there no more then i don't believe in it so are you saying the entire political landscape of nigeria at the moment there's nobody you can you i mean even if they give you the opportunity you can go submit under their mentorship and uh, maybe uh, the governor for your state and i tell you the reason okay yeah. right one he was a businessman doing well in his business before he went into politics okay two He's a youth-driven person. Mm. Try as much as possible. Mm. You understand? And he mm. understands that we need to develop a new generation yeah, of leaders, leaders and it gives yeah. opportunity to more young mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And three, he fought his way, mm. you understand, mm -hmm. to the top. Mm. Maybe if you have time, you can try and um, watch Omi Tuntun when she Makede contested for governorship under sdp wow yeah serious sdp under sdp that's 1992 yeah no it was not 1992 that was 2000 uh, and uh, okay the new yeah SDP. he brought the yeah yeah. Okay. yeah then he has worked he, he, he has fought with that uh, during the time of had yeah you know that people thought they were going to kill him really you know what i'm saying and everything so if somebody like that who came from the private sector yeah. and has come into politics and be able mm. to drive it to that level. Yeah. I think I'll prefer and be comfortable to, you know, mm. understand to submit to Well, the argument is that the reason why, you know, some people move from private sector into public sector fail in politics is because they are too opinionated, too rigid, uh, too egocentric. They are not humble. They don't know how mm. to, you know, be prostrating, following mm. politicians up mm. and down, and that um, we might never f get that season in Nigeria where we will find people getting to leadership based on merit. It will mm. always remain this, you know, you have to go and serve and queue, you know. <laughs> That's the APC, you know, but I don't think it's happening in any other party. Okay. Maybe it's in the APC, you go it's in all the parties, yeah. you all are the same. <laughs> 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 At least that's my own personal opinion. But, I mean, what's your view about that? No, but the truth is, there is a similarity between business and politics. Okay. And once you get this right, mm. then what you're talking about will not be a problem. Okay. Stakeholders management. Okay. Yes, and once okay. you identify who the stakeholders are, yeah. even if you have to prostrate, yeah. you prostrate. Okay. You understand? But you will not be prostrating up and down. Okay. But you'll be able to identify the key stakeholders, yeah. the people that, that, need to the, you that should do that. And sometimes even your stakeholders mm. are the market women. Mm. You understand? The yeah. market women, they don't need your prostrate, uh, your yeah. prostration for yeah. them to do the right thing for yeah. you. Yeah. You understand? So it's stakeholders yeah. engagement. So mm. once you know how to engage those stakeholders, mm. then you'll be able to have your way, mm. you know. Guys, I saw Shinopela's um, political magic once. <laughs> 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 so we had, there was this CEO round table, uh, you know, at the Boro, um, you know, hotel. And I remember they were to appoint a president for this group of CEOs. I, I was one of the speakers, he was there. And I remember when they said people should nominate themselves. I was with just Justice Maple were sitting together. And they said one of the nominees uh, or you know candidate to be voted for is Shinopella. She was mentioned at that kind. I said, forget this. <laughs> I said, Shinopella Pella is <laughs> we're winning. So she was like, ah, no, I I <laughs> When the whole vote was cast, right? <laughs> and you won, say, how did you know? I said, because they pointed her, and I thought it was going to do the magic. And now, to our surprise, there were like 10 candidates. 
People started, the same people who gave manifesto, time to vote, they down. started stepping down. So the question, tell us the magic here today. What magic did you pull that made candidates, well, did, have you discussed with them before the voting season? Did you plant them so that no. it will look as if there are now more people stepping down so that way others will probably <laughs> were not on no, but honestly, what just, happened? No, no, honestly, I just think that um, they just feel more comfortable. Come on. But honestly, they feel more comfortable. No. <laughs> Out of all the candidates there, no. I am the only one with public sector no. experience and both private sector yeah, experience, yeah? yeah? yeah. <laughs> 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 we don't go green. Eh? Well, because I mean, I believe our audience want to learn about because politicking. It, how does it? Yeah, because mm. we are talking about young leaders, and, mm. and this is a podcast on leadership. You know, and that is a very good example of. I mean, you don't need to go into too much details, but uh, you know, how did you? Because that was a typical magic like your dad used to do it. <laughs> but honestly, like I said, it was, yeah. But that day I knew that, um, ah. I knew that, um, you know, um, somebody that likes to take responsibility. Yes. And um, bringing in the room. Yes. And tapping it. Yes. I believe it's an opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, that we never know where it can take us. Very true. And right now, I'm not really doing anything Mm. You know, mm. outside, I'm um, just my business. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, entrepreneurship, we give room to problem yeah. solving True. and we can network. Yeah. As this we are trying to do mm -hmm. from Lagos. Yeah, exactly, exactly in Ghana. Exactly in Ghana and, and everything. So it's an opportunity. And at that time, when they just said it, I felt like, um, you know, it is. The position is for me. I don't know. I don't know. That conviction just came to me. But what, honestly, I'm uh, So what did you so have to do? So when it happened, no, nothing. I just made people to understand that I've been running for this position. Anyway. So that's it. So from there. There was so, a paper passing on at some point. No paper. You passed on the <laughs> <Yeah>. paper. <laughs> Yeah, it's even at the level of CEOs. I was like, ah, this is that. <laughs> but that was a very mm. exciting experience to really see how politics works. Mm. So maybe behind the camera, he will tell me. Maybe I will come and tell you. <laughs> but I really wanted to understand. But typically, generally now, how, what type of leadership does Africa need? I mean, we're at, uh, here in Ghana, African, you know, leadership conference. What kind of leadership does Africa need? Um, yeah. The type of leadership that we need now, we definitely need transformational leadership, mm -hmm. which is very important because mm -hmm. truly God has blessed our land with so much, with a lot of resources. Yeah. And it is sad mm. that with all our resources, we mm. have not achieved results. Mm. And... Um, Africa, even during your speech, yeah. you know, downstairs, yeah. you said something about, you know, the strength, mm. you know, mm. of our human resources. Yes. We have the best of the yes, best we do. in everything. Yeah. And I think it's just this time for us to look inwards mm. and definitely want mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to our orientation. Mm. It is very important. Mm -hmm. When I was in the house of breaks, yeah. One of the motion and the bills that I sponsor mm. was to call on the federal government mm. to reinvigorate the National Orientation Agency. Yeah, that's true. That's a dead. Agency. I think this is very important yeah. for us to reinvigorate National Orientation Agency. Mm. Yoruba says, "Call me, call your friend, say me." Prevention mm -hmm. is better than like cure. Yeah. And I think if we strengthen the National Rehabilitation Agency, mm. because it is an agency that has offices in all the 774 local governments, mm. mm. and the mandate of this agency is to be a bridge mm. between the government and the people. Mm. Inform the people, mm -hmm. the programs of the government, mm -hmm. the plans of the government, mm -hmm. and also take a feedback from the mm -hmm. people yeah. back to the government. Yeah. So I think right now, if we really want to move forward, mm. accountability is mm. important. Mm. And doing that, like the National Rehabilitation Agency should be merged with at least like NIMSI, mm -hmm. which has, you know, access to mm -hmm. data mm -hmm. and we can be able to monitor the mm. growth and the performance, you know, of this. And also give opportunity to more young people. Yeah. 
whether we like it or not, the world is evolving. We mm. have more young people. But in people the system. argue that you, they, nobody will give you. You have to take it. Yeah, that's it. You know, like they say, power is not served at like that. Mm. You know, and you said something today. Yeah. You know, and I really, you know, I, I, I put it down. Yeah. You know that the wisdom of the old and yes. the energy of young people. Yes. Definitely, yes. You know, create we, magic. You, you will create yeah. magic, yeah. and I think so as well. Mm. I believe that, but I mm. think. When we're talking about more young people now, it should even be young people that have achieved something on yes, their own. Yes, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, you don't just yes. pick up young people yes. because they are young. Yes. You must be able yes. to look at them. what have, has this person something. been doing for the past yes. 10 years as a young yeah, person. Private, so if you can sustain as a young person, mm. when 10 years, mm. you know, in your private business, mm. you definitely do well, you know, in mm. the uh, business of Will government. you contest the election, governorship election 2020? People believe you return to PDP because... You want to be the next governor for your no, state? No, I returned to PDP because I've realized that there are only two major political parties. Mm -hmm. You know, the 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 the, the lesson I've learned mm -hmm. in the last election. Yeah, I spent a lot of money. I did a lot of work, mm -hmm. but basically, maybe because why we ran on a third force mm -hmm. party, mm -hmm. which is Accord. Mm -hmm. You know, as not because I achieved that. If I'd run mm. under PDP, then I would have, you know, won that election. Okay. So that is a lesson learned. Okay. And um, although for me, I don't regret the past. When something has happened, I just take my lessons and uh, because and um, try, mm. you know, to make use of it. But I'm in PDP yeah. today mm. because I've been in the APC mm. and I've been burnt. Mm -hmm. You know, in the APC, despite everything that I've done for the party. Well, I mean, you talked about stakeholder management. Do you think you didn't manage the stakeholders well? I mean, looking at it from the governorship candidates of APC in Oyo, looking at it from even the current president, I mean, there were people who were, you were all in APC, you know, House of Rep, who got tickets to go back to us over you seem not to get it well, did you not manage those uh, no there is there, the yeah, of no, no there's it's not about that mm. first of all i did not run for house of reps because it was an agreement like they say agreement is agreement mm -hmm. before, I, before i came in you know yeah, you do I'm a man, yes i'm a man of peace mm. and i understand the importance of principle of equity, fairness, and justice. Mm. If you want to build peace, mm. you must understand the principle of equity, fairness, yeah. and justice. Yeah. So by the time I came in, mm. my local government, I, my constituency has four different local governments. Mm. And my local government has about four representation between 2000 and 1999 and 2015. Wow. So by the time I came in, yeah. there was already an agitation yeah. that they must identify somebody else from, from another, another local, local government. government. That has not gotten that because much. That has not gotten that much and everything. So I came in mm. and they looked at me as a young guy, somebody that has not been in politics and yeah. I've helped them a lot yeah. and with a good name, you know, mm. that my father left me, so mm. rest in peace. Yeah. So I agreed that, okay, I was going to do just mm. one term mm -hmm. and um, would rather contest for Senate. Mm. So when the primaries came, mm. I never, I didn't contest for House of Rep. It's not that maybe I lost an mm. House of Rep mm. election. So I had to support everybody. Mm. Like that is what this is what it means when you say stakeholders manager. Yeah. What the stakeholder wants, yeah. what they wanted the representation mm -hmm. uh, representative to come mm -hmm. from Kajola Iwajowa. Mm -hmm. So my area is the same in Tessi yeah, So you, we agree to but that. You, the main stakeholder here were the party. I mean, you, you need to win the primary before you can go to the I think that is where our big, I think that is where our problem is. We mm -hmm. must understand that in, in democracy, yeah. the main stakeholder are the, to voters. Protect, they are the people. Mm. You know, it's a government of the people, made mm. by the people and for the people. Mm. So I think the interest of the people to protect mostly should be priority. the people. So yes, people think they are the stakeholders up. And that was why even uh, the former president, Buhari, said it, that mm. our politics, if we really want to move forward in yeah. life, I think our politics must change from Abuja mm -hmm. downwards mm -hmm. to... To become a grassroots. Yeah, to start from down, yeah. then you climb up. Mm -hmm. It's called political organizing. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, it's sad that mm -hmm. in Nigeria, the people can say this is what they want. Then mm -hmm. from Abuja, they'll mm -hmm. say this is who you should use. Mm -hmm. So that way we'll never move forward. Yeah.
I mean, you, you're a strong Muslim. The question is, you own a club. Do you drink? Do you... Because um, you also even look conservative in real life. I mean, the you people see on social media is even from you. You look very calm and I'm gentle. I'm you. Hey, <laughs> there's only one life to live, my brother. <laughs> yeah, there's only one life to live, and yeah. um, this is what I tell people. There are two things that guide me in my life. One, yeah. don't be judgmental. Leave all judgment to God. Mm. You understand? As a Muslim, mm. yeah, I drink occasionally. Okay, but my uh, because I own a nightclub. Mm-hmm. You understand? You have, no choice. Think, <laughs> you have to. I have to be, uh, <laughs> That's leadership. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So, so, but I choose the time that I drink. Okay. I don't drink during the day. Okay. No, I don't. You can't see me drink during the day. Okay. So I'm um, disciplined with my drinking. Yeah. I have the hours that I can drink if I want to drink. Okay. And um, what did you, what question is asking? <laughs> <laughs> the the other part is, I mean, you look quite calm. I mean, in real life compared to the version of you in parties and yeah. all of that. So. Are there two version of you? Is there? No, I'm I just my, my brother. Like I said, I'm just <laughs> myself. It's simple. You know, hey, I was talking about your two things. That's yes. your two things here. Yeah, one, don't be judgmental. Yes. You know, let yeah. us leave all judgment to God. To God, yeah. We are not secretaries to, the, to God. Okay. And the day of judgment is coming. And okay. the good thing is they say you'll be judged by yourself. Yes. Nobody will be there to talk, you yes. know, to talk for you. Yeah. So I try as much as possible not to judge people. Okay. For me. Mm. And it's secondly, good for your business. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> and secondly, yeah. I don't do it to people what I cannot take. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm the one of the most understanding person, okay. especially if if you do something to me, yeah. and I think if I was in your shoes, it's mm-hmm. something I can't do mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. You won't even say sorry if I tell you don't worry. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I think it's important those okay. two things. You know, okay. it's what has made me a simple person. Okay. Well, the, the, I mean, the sh- version of Shinopela, me, I'm seeing, is a gentleman. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm seeing. Maybe as we go on, we'll see <laughs> another version <laughs> of Shinopela that is a bit more. But for now, I'm seeing a gentleman, you know, very calm. Maybe in, in doing politics or. In campaign, we'll see the Shinopela. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm gentle, but sometimes I'm just, uh, you know, I just like to be, to be, Calm. I respect people and I like to be respected. That's good, that's uh, good. I will match me, match you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, those are the political language. <laughs> it's beginning to come out. You know, this is a more of leadership business show, so he's, you know, I think he's t- taking it cool. <laughs> Are you a traditionalist? I am a Muslim, but I am a traditionalist according to my position, you know, as my traditional title holder. So I there certain rituals? There's no certain ritual. I only believe in one God, and I pray five times daily. Okay. You know, so... But uh, money... Well, how do you manage yes? So yeah, manage. like, like, like yeah. Um, you said. Um, one... I try myself, mm. and I try to do what is right, mm. and decisions to be taken. And I'll mm. tell you a typical example. Mm. When I was living the APC mm. in 2022, mm. and I was going to contest, mm. the first, I had three options mm. to choose the party because PDP had already contested their primaries then. Okay. Uh, they had already done their primaries then, yeah. so I had option to go Accord. with three parties. Yeah. Labor. Yeah. Should have joined Labour and MPP. So that is it. So if how would it be <laughs> if the agenda of Yoruba land, yeah. when we had a Yoruba agenda for president, then I am now in a Labour Party. So you understand. So that is leadership. Okay. So I had to forego that. Okay. Even if the, I had my friends in okay. Labour, I had people that already, you know, because they you already had like, a red carpet for like me to come into Labour. Yeah. You sound, uh, you sound like a mentally you know, rebellious person. Mm. Yeah, but as you my know. position as the leader of Yoruba land, yes. you know, at that time, Yoruba, we believe that um, the president be, should be the Yoruba, Yoruba, Yoruba president. Okay. And um, so I had That to, means your type of leadership believes in nepotism, is that it? No, no nepotism. Yeah. At that particular time, mm. I believe 
in upholding the position that I hold because I'll be having issues with some royal fathers. Okay. You understand? Okay. And for example, my chieftaincy title was given by the Alafian for you, seconded yeah. by the Onion Fife. Yeah. And at that time, all the traditional rulers are already coming together to say it is the time for Yoruba. Okay. And they mean okay. Yoruba, the leader of Yoruba land, yeah. you know, will be saying something different. Mm. So that's why I decided just to avoid that, mm. you understand? And say, okay, mm. let's put that on the mm. side and mm. look at the other two parties. Mm. So we had a NMPP mm -hmm. and we had Accord. Mm. So sitting with my people, mm. the kind of leadership that, you know, I always, I, don't, I, I, I practice, uh, what is called a collegiate leadership. Okay. You know, where I don't just take the decision. Okay. So we sit down, then we start, yeah. you know, to, so then we agree that the best party to go for is Accord okay. One. Because the people that we want to campaign to, yeah. most of these people only know the APC and PDP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what advantage? can we use against them with this party? Mm. So the advantage that we saw, number one, is that court party was the first party on the ballot paper. Okay, that's good. So it is easy yeah. when you are doing your yeah. sensitization. Yeah. So for you to tell them the first party yes. on the ballot paper. Yeah. And also, the logo for the party is the thumb. They're okay. going to use their oh, thumb to, to vote. Okay. So easy. that's how we agreed, okay. you know, and we met in our court. And I was so sure that we win that election. You are so sure. Well, yes, now. So how do you, how, how do you manage the heartbreak of of, of losing an election? My brother, so that is the <laughs> one thing to me. Yeah, I I, I did not suffer any heartbreak. One. Really? No. That's bad that you. I've come sure to realize in life mm -hmm. that there's there will be, there will always be a time a challenging time for everybody. Mm. At that time that I lost an election, maybe somebody else is losing a child. Mm. At that time that mm. I lost an election, maybe that somebody has had an accident and they are going to cut off his leg. Mm. Mm. So for me, I've come to realize that I, I pray to God, you know, that he um, should not give me any challenge that is bigger than me. Mm. But I've come to believe in God's plan. Mm. You know, so if things doesn't go my way, I'm not upset. Yeah, not upset. Even people at home that day, they were mm. so shocked. Wow. Because me, I was upstairs a week before the election, we were having a feast in my house almost mm. every day, killing mm. cow and the whole town, <laughs> everybody yeah, come and eat in my yeah. house. So after they said they, that we've lost an election, I was in my room upstairs. I had breakfast. I came downstairs, I saw the, the, the cow was still alone. I said, ah, if you will not come and kill this cow, people were crying. Said, Me, I've eaten upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. and thank God, wow. you know, we we're able to immediately come together yeah. and take a decision on what to do for governorship. Yes. Because at that time, even as an accord member, yeah. we had a governorship yes. candidate. So you then went again. Was, wouldn't people see that as a betrayal? Of no, it wasn't a betrayal because at that time, candidate. at that time, you know, like I said, I joined politics purpose, purpose because of the people yeah. and mainly because of my people from that Okyogo yeah. region. Because I believe that... Um, Okyogu people, Okyogu area, uh, you know, have been so marginalized yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of resources. I was telling you when mm -hmm. we were coming upstairs, mm -hmm. you know, there are two suspended leaks in the world. Mm -hmm. The first one is in Colorado in America. Mm -hmm. The other suspended leak in the world is in my local government. Wow. So there's so much resources, you know, good people and everything, and they're marginalized. So I tend to, you know, when... And with the kind of leadership that I have, yeah. you know, for us to follow, mm. you know, ourselves. And if you look at the political system in Ohio State, yeah. they cannot announce the results of a governorship election mm. if they have not brought the result of Okyogo. Wow. You know, so wow. at that time, after I lost the election, there was a meeting in Shaki with all the traditional rulers mm. and all the political heads, you know, mm. from every political party. Mm. And in that meeting, they agreed that if we do not have, if Shinapela has lost Senate, yeah. it is not his loss, it's our loss. Yeah. So, and now we have another election. Yeah. And the three people that are contesting this election, they are from Ibadan. Mm. As the governor, Shei Makinde, Shei Baya Adilabu, and Tessim Folari. So... Are we going to be fighting ourselves here mm -hmm. and divide ourselves yeah. and at the end of the day? Divide your the votes. Yeah. So let us all come together. Okay. So at that meeting, in that meeting, yeah. they agreed 
identifying what Governor Shimakide has done for the zone okay. and the time that he needed to use to complete his time. And it was an, uh, anonymous. Yeah, an, an anonymous decision, mm -hmm. you know, that we need to put our land first mm -hmm. and, you know, follow Shea Makede. So at, so at that time, I had no choice. Okay. You know, you have the, the royal fathers who I will still work with in the future. Mm -hmm. So I don't want mm -hmm. to see as the only yeah. one that is saying something else. Mm -hmm. So, and at that time, I spoke, I, the first person I went to meet is my candidate. Mm -hmm. And also people had already even spoken to me then to okay. tell us, guy, you guys just suffered a loss. You have another election in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You don't have a, House of Rep, out mm. of 14 House mm. of Reps, you don't have a senator yeah. out of three senators. Well, How do you, you want, want to win? So I think at this time, what people do mm. is to merge. Yeah. So probably maybe you should merge with APC mm. or merge with the PDP. Mm. But at that time, merging with APC was not even an option mm. because, you know, we were thrown under the bus from APC. Yeah. So uh, candidate in accord as well. Yeah. So, and with what has already been mm. said from home, mm. you know, the direction was pointing to work for the governor. Mm. So I had a conversation with um, Chief Adelabu. Okay. And Did he support your decision? Eh, at that time, he didn't support it because mm. he thought that he could win, that they would win the election. Okay. But for me, I was more practical because yeah. I needed him to prove to me that he yeah. could win. Mm. And um, I told him, I remember asking him, telling him that, that okay, what happened if we lose? And he mm. said, if we lose, everybody will go and bear their loss. I said, okay, mm. I'm already bearing one loss now. <laughs> so now I told him that, boy, if we lose you, they will call you and give you a minister. Uh, I'll call you really to this and everything. So if you know that you want it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So the same assurance that you said that sent you to that court, take me, let me go and sit there and tell him to that we, this is what will happen. So, so at the end of it, so politics is just, you know, something it's an interesting you know, very interesting game. game. Yeah. You know, my father was born a magician. Really? Yes, sir. Mm. Was not a magician, then he left from Nigeria on how to be able to manage the craft, you know, so yeah, went to well, school of well, magic well, and everything. Yeah, that's my mom, yeah. That's your mom. Yeah, her so cousin to two of us. Lady Pella, yeah. Is it, is it? Yeah. Okay, your mom is the real Lady Pella. Yeah. He cuts her into Yeah. It makes her fly, it makes her disappear. That's, uh, that's true? Yeah. Or you are not sure of the background? Uh, I'm a magician myself now. <laughs> You don't point to your brother. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you enjoy that back. <laughs> <laughs> So the lead generation. Okay, so in 2021, we started the lead generation initiative. Mm. And this is the reason why I believe that, um, you know, organization like Lead Generation Initiative should come mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. You agree with me that we need to begin to develop a new generation of leaders. Yeah. And the Lead Generation Initiative was a non-governmental, okay. non-partisan organization that okay. is focused at charging the youth to take okay. active responsibility for building their immediate mm. community environment. Mm. So we'll travel to one state, identify young minds in that state, possibly two to people by local government. Mm. It was free of charge. Mm. It was actually running on my personal funds mm. and um, put them in a hotel. Mm. Then breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. We give them stipend. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the next day, uh, so we, between 9 a.m. in the morning and 5 p.m., then we train them. Mm -hmm. The first thing we train them on is active citizenship. Yeah. Because a lot of people even in Nigeria, they are citizens, but they don't even know their roles. They yeah. don't know their rights. So we try to teach them that. Then we teach them political mobilization okay. and political organizing, okay. how to organize themselves, yeah. you know, from the polling unit yeah. level, you know, to the world level, yeah. to the local government level, yeah. then before you start thinking of, you know, your senatorial districts yeah. or your federal constituency. Yeah. So we let them to realize that before you think about who the next president of Nigeria mm -hmm. should be, you should ask mm -hmm. yourself, are you mm -hmm. that kind of president mm -hmm. that you want? Mm -hmm. You know, 
So we we teach, so 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 it was a trainee trainer model mm -hmm. where we train them and mm -hmm. give them a certificate mm -hmm. and allow them to go and train other people. Mm -hmm. So in Nigeria That's today, cool. we have trained over a thousand young people, wow. and those a thousand young people have trained over a hundred thousand on leadership, on, on leadership, political yeah, leadership, on political leadership. On so it's called Lead Generation Initiative. Good. So we it is an organization just to develop leaders. It mm -hmm. is not for me because I'm building any structure to mm -hmm. run for anything. Right now, but I just think that we need to just equip more young people mm -hmm. to understand for them to understand how important politics is. Because a lot of people do believe that politics should it's, be played, yeah, you know, dirty, by people that are dirty, that don't yeah. understand. This is like, is like to me now today, it's even like a stigma. Before I get somewhere, I say, ah, she not feel like the politics. I thought be like, so what was I before I joined politics, you know? Yeah. So, but I just think that it's high time, you know, for us to develop this young generation. So bottom line, you are not sure if you contest any position at the moment. And that one is left for the people to choose. Yeah, whether I'm, they I'm, want you or not. Yeah. Honorable Shinopela. Thank you. Thank you. Well, God is good to yeah. meet you. Thank you. <laughs> the billionaire Dr. Sivi <laughs> Akitayo. The billionaire <laughs> Shinopela. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's another wrap of a beautiful episode of uh, Leadership Podcast with me, Stephen Akintayo. See you on another beautiful episode and a wonderful guest. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.